Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're going to be painting Firefly Dream. I'm going to be sipping on a little bit of Chardonnay, but you can certainly sip on whatever you want, be it coffee or tea or juice or soda, whatever you want. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use acrylic paint. The colors are titanium white, Mars black, deep yellow, fluorescent green, and cobalt blue. And of course you can switch those up too. I'm gonna to be using three brushes. I'm gonna use a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush. I'll probably call them small, medium, and large as we go through the process. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And in the description below, I'm gonna be providing you with a couple of things. Um, one of them is a link where you can purchase a convenient kit that has all of these materials in it for you, um, specific to this particular project. I will also be providing you with a written step-by-step uh, -step instruction that you can print and use as reference, as well as a link to a downloadable image of the final painting. So you can certainly print that and use it as your reference as you go along. And that is all we're gonna need. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're painting the sky. I'm gonna be using my bristle brush. I'm gonna be using black, blue, and white. I'm gonna be using a left to right brush stroke, and I'm gonna get my sky to come lighter and lighter as it comes down towards my horizon. To know how far down I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go maybe about three quarters of the way down on my left hand side, and maybe about two thirds of the way on my right hand side. And I'm gonna make a little hill. So that's where I'll stop my sky. Um, you could have yours going straight across, you could have yours coming diagonal, whatever you want. But if you have maybe the left side a little bit lower than the right side, that will work out well. And you'll see at some point during my painting process, I'll kind of outline my, my land. So here we go. I'm gonna put black and blue on my brush at the same time to start. I'm going left to right, and I will not pick up black again because I don't wanna wash my brush, and I know that this black is really powerful and it's gonna stay on my brush for a little while, so what I'm gonna do is the next time I picked up paint, I just picked up blue, and what'll happen is this black will work its way off of my brush. You could certainly if you still want it a little bit darker, you could add a little bit more black, but I, I suggest, you know, just kind of going with the blue for a while and then seeing if it's something that you feel you want to add more black to because the black is really tough to take off of your canvas once it's on there. Um, so to, I, I like being safe rather than sorry. Um, so I don't really pick it up all too much just kind of at the top, I start letting it work its way off of my brush. And right now I'm gonna start picking up blue with a touch of white on my brush. And this is gonna start the transition into my sky, getting lighter and lighter as it comes down. And again, I had mentioned um, that at some point I would kind of outline where I want my land to go. And I think right about now is a good time because I'm getting down pretty far on my right hand side. So I'm gonna come down about two thirds, and I'm just gonna kind of make myself whatever kind of little land hill structure I want. And now I'm just gonna kind of keep painting with my blue and white. And at, soon I'm gonna stop picking up blue and I'll just pick up white. And what'll happen is similar to what happened when we were doing the black to blue, the blue is gonna work its way off of my brush and I'm gonna end up with a really nice light sky as it comes down towards the base of my horizon. And I'm gonna keep going left to right as opposed to when you get to this hill, your brain's gonna want you to go kind of um, diagonally, like swoop it around your hill. 
it will look more natural if you can keep your brush going left to right as opposed to swooping it down that hill. And again, I'm just kind of, right now I just added white to my brush and this is gonna give me a nice light spot at the bottom of my sky. Almost as if maybe, you know, the sun is, you know, just very far, far off in the, off in the you know, other side of the earth and it's just kind of illuminating the horizon line a little bit. And I'm just kind of getting this last little step on here. And before I say that I'm all done, I'm just gonna kind of swoop my brush, kind of sweep it across that whole sky just to make sure I've got everything nice and blended. And then when I am done with this step, I am going to wash and dry the same brush because we're going to use this bristle brush for the next step. I just want to get a little bit more white at the bottom here. All right. And that does it for me. I'm going to get ready for my next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the first layer on our ground and I'm gonna be using my bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black paint only. Um, there is no fancy brush stroke to this step. Um, the only trick, it, well, it's not really a trick, but the only thing that you wanna try and do when um, you're doing this is the main area is just a solid black but when you get towards um, that horizon line, you kind of want that to be uneven. Um, so instead of doing a really clean line going across, you can make it um, almost like a little wispy looking if you want to. Uh, you can also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas as you go. Um, but I started at the bottom of my ground which is giving me a little bit of a chance for that sky that I just painted to dry a little bit. So when I do get up to it, I'm not really running into too much wet paint. And then when I get to that sky, you're just gonna see I'm gonna change my brush stroke a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it a little bit. I think there's a song, wiggle it just a little bit. Wiggle it just a little bit. I wanna see Sorry, I can't sing. I like to, but I can't. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of songs that happen in my head as I'm doing this. So as you can see, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit and I am making that horizon line nice and uneven. So this is gonna give it all like a nice silhouetted look um, of a nice evening landscape. And I'm gonna go all the way across with this and then we are going to be using this same, or no, we're not gonna use this brush. We're gonna switch brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So when you get this step all nice and done, you're going to put this brush away in your water cup perhaps and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the, the jar, the glass jar, and I'm gonna be using my medium brush um, to do this. The colors I'm using are white and blue. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with white and I'm gonna put my jar in its shape and then I'm gonna add little white and blue streaks throughout it so it almost looks like um, the glass is kind of reflecting some of the sky colors in it. And I want this to be a glass jar so you can see some of the um, little fireflies inside of it. So I'm gonna start with white paint. Um, one of my tricks here um, to getting a nice pointy brush is you can take your brush and kind of spin it on the side of your palette. That's gonna make it nice and pointy and I'm not gonna push hard. So as I'm doing this, I'm very lightly touching my canvas so that way I have a thinner line. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna make a semi-diagonal line for the bottom of the jar and then I'm gonna go up in a, in a little bit of a diagonal and make another horizontal line that's gonna be a little bit more short, a little shorter. So here I go, I'm gonna do my first line and this is gonna be kind of diagonal like that, and my line is probably about four inches long. And then I'm gonna go directly above it in 
that similar angle and somewhere maybe a two or three inches into the sky I'm going to do a similar line as this only it's going to be a little bit shorter so I'm going to in my you know invisible line go up to about here and then I'm going to make it a little bit shorter so I'm going to go from here to here maybe a little bit more so I'm a little bit shorter than here a little bit shorter than here and now I'm going to make the edges or the sides of my jar so for me, I'm going to have this a little bit curved like that, and then I'm going to curve it out a little bit like this. I'm going to call that like the shoulder of my jar, and I'm going to come down, and then I'm going to curve it a little bit at the bottom. Now the hardest part to this is doing a similar line on the other side. And if you don't get it perfect, don't worry, because you can kind of um, manipulate it a little bit once you've... Um, got it on here. So here I go. I'm going to kind of watch that line and do a similar kind of line here. I'm going to buckle it out like this, do a little shoulder, and then I'm going to keep my eye on the prize, which is this bottom corner here. And when I get there, I'm going to just kind of curve it a little bit. And that's my basic shape. It might not be perfect. I'm not really worried about it. Um, and now I'm going to still take the white and kind of add white streaks so I can have um, kind of that glassy look to it. Um, I want it to look like it's a round jar. So what I'm going to do is when I do these top ones, I'm kind of pulling them in from the edges in a little bit of an arcing motion. And you could certainly manipulate the top too to make it look a little bit rounder. If you have to correct any of these little corners, feel free to do so. And then when I go into this shoulder region, I'm going to, at the in the same kind of fashion, I'm going to bring it down in kind of like a little curved motion. And I'm just kind of doing these little streaks coming down, specifically the sides of the jar. I'm trying to avoid having a really clean edge to it, so that's why I'm swooping a little bit of this paint in through there. And now once I have kind of the makings of this glare on my glass, now I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up a touch of blue and I'm going to add additional little blue streaks in the same kind of um, painting stroke rhythm that I did for the white streaks. And this is going to just add a little bit of illusion that it's reflecting some of that bright blue sky. And you don't want to paint in the entire glass. If you find that you have too much paint on your brush, just take it and wipe it on your paper towel. And then you can come in and just kind of almost rub some of these little streaks in through here. And that's really all I'm going to do. I don't want to overpaint it. I just want these um, little kind of streaks here and there. And then I am going to be using this same brush for the next step, but I'm going to wash it and dry it. So once you get your jar on here, you can take this brush, wash it and dry it, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer of our grass and we're gonna do it with just black paint and we're gonna use our medium brush. So this should be kind of a quick step. I've got black on my brush. I want some kind of long pieces on that left hand or on the right hand side. And I don't hold my brush tight. Um, this way it gives me some nice natural kind of bends to the, the grass and I've got some long pieces and some short pieces and I don't even care about the main area of the grass right now because it's black. Um, this is just meant to give you some nice silhouettes. You can even do a couple in front of your jar, but I'm not doing too much in front of there. I'll put more later, but right now I'm just kind of putting a couple strategic pieces and that's all I'm going to do for that step. We are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So when you get done with this, put your big medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're doing for this step is we're writing our word 
on the jar. I'm going to write the word dream, but you can certainly write whatever word you want. You can write love or believe or hope or whatever you want. Um, I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to use white and blue. Um, and how I do this is I'm going to start with white, but my trick here, so I have a nice fluid motion to it, is I'm going to take a touch of water and mix it in with a little bit of my white. And that way it's going to give me a nice fluid brush stroke. And if I need to do more than one layer, I do more than one layer. But I'm just going to start with white. And um, I always recommend when you're doing these kind of painterly words to use your own penmanship. Um, if you try to use something fancier than yours or something that you're, you know, you saw and you want to do, it's, it's much harder. Um, you could certainly do it with a pencil or a piece of chalk first and do it that way, but I like to do my own penmanship and then just make one letter, like the first letter, the fancy letter. So here we go. I'm going to make my fancy D um, and then I'm just going to kind of write my normal penmanship cursive for the other um, letters. So I'm going to just kind of do a swirly in through here and maybe, you know, something like this. It's not super fancy, but it's fancier than my own normal penmanship. And then I'm going to do my, my R and just go slow. You know, there, there's no, there's no time limit on this. My E, my A. And then my M. I'm running into my grass. That's okay. I'll put my grass back over it. And then what I'm going to do while my paint is still wet, I'm just going to dip my brush in blue. And I'm going to give it kind of little streaks throughout this. So what's going to happen is it's going to kind of look like the glass. Um, and it's, you know, having little bits of reflection from the sky. So that's the intent is to just kind of use it with a little bit of blue streaks here and there. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent blue. I'm just adding these little kind of pops, little streaks of the blue in there to give it the illusion that it's part of the glass. And then that's all I'm going to do for that step. Um, the next step we are going to be using our medium brush. So once you get your word on here, you can put this small brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing our second layer or final layer of the grass. I'm using my medium round brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are green, yellow, white, and black. And my goal here is to have really thick, wild grass um, and I want it to be lighter by the jar and that's going to indicate to the viewer that the fireflies are kind of lighting up the grass that's by the, um, the jar. So because we have a black background, when you're using green and yellow by themselves, they're going to look pretty bright when they're wet and then they will dry darker as they, um, when they when they dry because they're going to have the black behind them. So at sometimes you're going to want to use yellow and white on your brush or green and white, um, or you could do like I do and just don't wash your brush through the process and then you'll have all different shades of color. So I'm going to start over on the right and I'm going to work my way um, from dark to light. So I've got green on my brush and I use a ton of paint on my brush and I definitely want to make sure that I cross over into my sky area because this is all meant to look like it's part of the same hill. So you don't just want to have grass down here and then grass at the top. This is all the same grass. Um, so you can certainly cross over. Again, right now I'm just kind of using green. Um, I will start to use yellow in a minute, but I know that I want this green represented all over the canvas or all over the grassy area. So I'm just going to kind of add that first. I'm crossing over um, into my jar a little bit and I am reloading so frequently um, because I want to have it thick. And now I just picked up yellow without washing my brush 
and this is going to help me um, kind of intermingle that yellow with the green. And you can see my brush kind of goes fast. I'm not holding it tight. And the reason I don't hold it tight is I want it to have that natural bend to it. So I just kind of keep flicking my brush. Um, I don't overwork any one particular spot. I just kind of keep adding these pieces of grass. Um, and I'm still just kind of using ye uh, the yellow right now, but it's going through wet green. I'm also going through a couple pieces of wet black, which I'm totally cool with. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is once I get this yellow kind of represented everywhere, I'm gonna start introducing the white um, and getting this area to be nice and light. And then if I have to or want to, at the end, that's when I'll use a little bit of black. Um, and that will be primarily to um, show little shadows in throughout the pieces of grass. But you might find after you get these white pieces on here that you're digging the way that it looks and you don't need to introduce any additional um, black into it. Uh, and again, I'm using a lot of paint. I do not um, press really hard. Uh, so that way I get these little kind of chaotic pieces of grass. Um, and even though the paint that I'm working on top of, the yellow and the green, is still wet, because I'm using a good amount of paint on my brush and I'm not pressing hard, I'm allowed to see these pieces of grass individually. Um, as opposed to them all kind of mushing together. And you can see I'm strategically kind of hiding the bottom of my jar. This is gonna make it look like it's just kind of nestled in deep into that wild grass. Um, and you can, you know, you can certainly encapsulate that, that jar as, as much as you want. Right now I am picking up yellow, green, and white just to add some additional pops of color intermingled with that that white and again you can get this to be as wild as you want it to be or as subtle as you want it to be it's your painting you can really have as much fun with it as you want i think i'm going to add a couple of kind of rogue straggler ones coming coming up here and i know that i am going to have um the fireflies in a couple minutes so i know that that's that's gonna fill out the top of my canvas, but I definitely wanna make sure I've got a good amount down here. I think I am gonna add a couple pieces of black. So I just wiped my brush on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black. And this again, just it adds another dimension to it. Even, even though you have some black underneath, this helps to add a couple of little shadows on top of this or it's adding some more silhouetted kind of pieces of grass that are on this side um, or it can help to break up some some really thick pieces that you might not be too terribly fond of so just you know keep alternating those colors you're going to find your rhythm you're going to find what is visually appealing to you. I like these tall pieces over on this right side, so I just kind of add in a little bit more. And you're gonna notice as this dries that it's gonna get darker and darker, especially over here. Um, and I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna call it on this step. Um, we are gonna use this same brush, the medium brush, for the next step. So once you get your grass done, you can wash and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our fireflies. We're gonna be using this medium round brush and we're gonna be using yellow and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start um, the flies with a white dot, just a polka dot. This is gonna in essence give me kind of a road map where I want them to go. Um, and how I'm gonna do it is I want them to kind of look like they're either escaping my jar or finding their way into my jar. So I'm gonna have a couple in my jar and then I'm gonna have them kind of large over here and I'm gonna have them kind of going in like this spiral and as they get farther away, my spiral and my dots are gonna get smaller and smaller. And then I'll have a couple sporadic ones in my 
land and then maybe I'll have some little twinkly ones all over the sky but the focal point will be the big spiral ones so here I go I'm going to put white paint on my brush and I'm going to say okay I want a couple in my in my jar so I'm just going to kind of put a couple of white dots in my jar maybe I've got my first one coming out my jar in through there and now I'm going to the first ones I do are going to be spaced pretty far apart and then as I get towards the smaller ones they're going to be closer together so I'm going to maybe space this maybe about two an inch and a half to two inches away from each other and this first spiral I may I don't have it come farther than halfway in my uh, you know over my canvas so that way it gives me room to have more of the spirals so I'm really just kind of in my head seeing this spiral happening it's going to come over here and my dots are going to start to get closer and closer together as I come into this spiral and then as I start going into this last spiral it's going to be smaller and smaller so here I go I'm going into this last little spiral here they're getting closer and closer together and then as I go to trail it off into the distance, they're really, really tiny, 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 tiny. Now that I've got my spiral kind of road mapped, I'm gonna put a couple strategic ones in my grass. So maybe a couple over here, maybe one here. You can certainly put them wherever you want. I'm just kind of free forming, freestyling here. And then I'm going to start using white with yellow on my brush. So I don't wash my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of yellow. And now I'm going to give myself, get my hand out of the way here, a light kind of spirally swirl around that white dot. If you hit the white dot, don't worry. You can always revamp it later and make it bring back the brightness to it but the, you want to try and keep the brightest part of that um, firefly as the center. Um, so again, I have the white and yellow on my brush and I'm just kind of doing this spiral on the outside of that and I'm picking up some white and yellow to reload my brush as if that little firefly in the middle is casting this glow around its nucleus or the center and then I'm just going to keep doing this these bigger ones obviously take a little bit more time um, but when you get to the smaller ones you'll notice that those are going to go much faster and I'm just kind of taking my time so that way I can keep that um, that vibrant center to it and it's okay if you have these like little wispy kind of strokes around it that's going to make it look kind of more glowy if you have it really perfect and um, clean around the edges that might that's going to you know make it look really organized which is fine because some of you have that a type personality that's going to cause you to make it nice and clean but I definitely have a, a chaotic kind of side to my brain um, and just kind of don't lose yourself in the spiral just if you can maintain knowing where each one of these is going, that's great. And then again, if you paint over that bright center, you can always come back to it later and just re-brighten it. Um, Cause I, I noticed I've gone over a couple of mine, but no worries. And then as I start turning this corner, I'm gonna start making them a little bit smaller than these ones. Cause I wanna give the illusion that they're starting to go farther away and my you know my little nucleus definitely is a little tougher to keep on these small ones so I'll probably come back and just kind of um, repop that white onto the ends but just kind of spinning my brush here get these little um, spots and then when you get to those really tiny ones you might not even need to spiral your brush you might just kind of dot it with the with the yellow and then you'll have a nice uh, kind of color variation of of both of them 
So again, I'm just kind of using yellow and white to add these and then these little polka dots, these far ones off in the distance, just kind of dotting them. I'm going to go back and just kind of re um, highlight that little tiny white dot in the center and then I have a couple in my grass that I wanted to do but before I forget about these little centers I'm just kind of going back and re-highlighting them. Now I'm going to go and do some of these ones in my grass and you know you might um, want if you have some wet grass you just kind of want to stay away from wet green or wet black um, so if yours is still pretty wet you can certainly either wait or hit it with a blow dryer. That can certainly help to speed up that process. And then we have one final little step. Well, actually, I'm, I think what I'm gonna do too, I'm gonna add little tiny, I guess you could call these either stars or dots. If you have areas in your sky, you know, these are still fireflies. I'm just kind of taking that little color and just kind of sporadically making these teeny little dots and then um, we have one little tiny step to go after this and it's going to be with your small brush so once you get your fireflies on here oops I missed one right here you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and then you'll take out that small brush and sometimes it's so hard to stop you can get Especially as it's drying, you're like, oh, I want a little bit more brightness there, a little bit more brightness there. So you just have fun. You keep painting as much as you want. Press play or pause whenever you want to. I'm going to go on to the next step with my small brush. And ah, uh, it's so hard to stop. Okay, on to the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step, um, which is the final step to every painting. Um, and it's signing it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. Uh, this particular one I'm going to do in the bottom right. I'm going to be using white and yellow. Um, I'm going to use them on my brush at the same time. I do my initials. You could totally do your last name or your first name or the date or whatever you want to. Um, and I'm looking at mine, sorry. I'm kind of losing concentration here because I'm looking at mine and I'm, I'm really just dreaming of a nice summer night here. And I think if, if, I, if I sit here and I, I listen close enough, yeah, I can hear them, all those little summertime bugs and fireflies. They're just kind of making their way through this really nice evening, evening sky. So that, now that I've kind of digressed for a moment, is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and you've created yourself a nice dreamy landscape as I have. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>